on containing the subprime crisis and perhaps providing some stability to the f financial markets? Uh, I think that what this does is this really shows how the credit crisis is really coming into play here. And President Bush is really answering Bill Gross last week when he uh, mentioned that, that, that uh, Bush should take action here. And uh, it's, it's quite surprising actually that he is um, coming up with these measures. But I think what this does is it solidifies the debate that uh, uh, the Fed will cut rates on September 18th. I think there were some questions, but now that we have the federal government involved and uh, declaring that there is a subprime crisis, this uh, is a major step. So I think that this solidifies a cut for uh, September 18th. Okay, it solidifies a cut. So you think it's more likely that we'll see a cut on the 18th then. Would that be the only cut you expect to see for the year, Stephen? I think we're likely to see at least two cuts by the end of the year. The market is still pricing in at least three cuts, but I think we'll still see two cuts. I think that there's still some very strong data. And as we saw that yesterday in the GDP being revised up, and specifically because of global growth and global trade is such a big issue right now. And with export growth growing, I think as a global growth outlook is still remains positive. So I think that uh, employment levels remain high. So I, I think that we'll only see two cuts by the end of the year here. Okay, what's that gonna do for the dollar then? Uh, well, it really depends on just how effective uh, this credit crunch is gonna be and we'll see how these measures that uh, President Bush has taken. As uh, if it is very strong, then uh, we could see a return to the safe haven that we saw a couple weeks ago. But if we focus on interest rate differentials, then uh, we could see some downward pressure and uh, we could see the euro move up to about 140 uh, in the short term here. And for dollar yen, I mean, this has been uh, a pair that uh, really has been whipsawing this, uh, this week in particular because of uh, data out in the U.S. Uh, as well. Do you expect to see weakness in the dollar vis-a-vis -vis the yen? Uh, I think that the yen will actually fall a little bit because I do see a continual gradual gradual uh, uh, return of the carry trade here and we're seeing it hover at 116 as news today that inflation uh, came in and uh, low numbers again today so the impact has on the BOJ increasing rates is more and more delayed here so uh, just focusing on the overall uh, carry trade situation by the end of the year I, I think we're looking at uh, the yen at about 120 okay so you'd be uh, shorting dollar yen right now then no, sorry long yes. dollar yen right Right, yes. right, right. Yeah. Okay, got it, got Sorry. it. Uh, very, very quickly then, Stephen, if I could just talk to you about uh, what's happening down under in Australia. We did have some stronger retail sales numbers out uh, signaling that uh, people are still spending uh, quite a bit in Australia. Juxtapose that with what you see happening with the Aussie dollar for us, will you? Well, I, th I think that the data was before, uh, was July data, it wasn't August data, but overall the commodity boom remains strong and uh, job growth remains strong, that uh, unemployment's still at 32 year lows here. So we're still looking for a rate hike in the first quarter. They'll delay it till after the election. But uh, with that background, I think that the fundamentals should prove that uh, the Aussie dollar will regain and uh, move up towards uh, the 86 level here. Okay, and that would be in line with the yen carry trade scenario that you see continuing throughout the rest yes. of this year, right? What, what, what might throw this uh, into disarray? What triggers or what, what signals might you be looking for to think, you know what, I'm going to have to reassess uh, the strength of the yen carry trade going forward? Well, it really comes down to, to what the, uh, the Fed does and because the, the BOJ meets the day after. So we're going to have to, uh, I'm expecting that they will cut despite uh, the, the negative retail sales. Or I'm sorry, I, I expect that the, the BOJ to hike rates and uh, in September, despite the fact that they've had some uh, data that does not really support that. But I still think they're going to try to normalize rates as soon as possible. So if there's a change in that f uh, meeting the day after the rate uh, um, hike in the, in the States, then I think that that could have a major impact. So two very important days in, uh, in, in mid-September. So I, I think that it's overall that f BOJ meeting in September is very, very significant. Okay, let me get this straight. You expect a Fed rate cut in September, the day after you expect the BOJ to hike interest rates, right? Correct. Okay, Stephen, That's thanks right. so much for joining us. That's Stephen cool. Rolls, analyst at CFC Seymour there. Well, don't forget, you can now get the latest business headlines on CNBC's new mobile news service that's specially tailored for your phone. Enter asia.cnbc.com on your cell phone, and you'll be up to speed with the latest market-moving stories. Well, we've got plenty more coming up on the next hour of CNBC's Cash Flow. 
Plus, Indian markets set to kick off trade in just about an hour's time. We'll be heading live to Mumbai and we'll be seeing how investors will react to the GDP data that's due out in a couple hours' time.